This video is all about how we set up drip tape irrigation on our garden to plant a rather large garden. This is our second year using drip tape and we have a few pointers for how to put it all together and also how to make scrap pieces work and how to patchwork all that because all of this irrigation or majority of it came from a different house and we had to make it work for this field. If you want to see just how we got this garden ready for planting before any plants went in, keep watching. So we are out in the big field today or the big garden is what we're calling it and so far all we have planted out here are some potatoes over here and way over there. Today the plan is just to get them on irrigation. So we have our leader line here. We're actually using scrap old leader line that we had from other gardens. So my husband just went and goof plugged all of them throughout the lines so that we can use this old line. And then we have our drip tape over here on top of the row. They have already been planted with potatoes. So we're going to be burying this drip tape and that's coming up next. This is our main leader line for our water. We're just going to get it secured to the post and it'll just kind of hang out here all summer. So with drip tape one important thing to do is make sure you have a pressure reducer. So this is kind of the setup right here is there's the pressure reducer and then we have a little fertilizer thing right here and all this is kind of just put together however just to make it fit. Here is our leader line which is this thick one inch pipe. It comes over here and then it's right here and this goes all the way into the barn and it is connected to just a frost free. So that was our way of getting a little bit more pressure out here and having everything come off of the one inch pipe and then down he just kicked it on. Oh we have some leaks. That's a goof plug leaking. I have to splice that. Let's see what else we have. That's more so what it should be doing, barely leaking or not leaking at all, really. These look pretty good down here. I don't see any leaks on these plugs that we did. Those are those goof plugs I was talking about. And our drip tape is not buried. And there it is starting to drip a little bit of water. When you put drip tape down, you put the hole where the water comes out facing up. And we learned last year the hard way that you have to bury drip tape. If you don't bury it, it will expand and contract a lot. And that expansion and contraction is really frustrating because the line moves everywhere and then your plants aren't getting watered. I wanted to show off just how we are doing this riser head with this main leader line. That is the inch tube right here. So we have our main leader line and it goes all the way along the head of the garden here at the beginning of the garden. And then it's hooked up to four riser heads like this, or I'm calling them riser heads. And they're all kind of set up like this. This is so we can water all of this garden space and actually have these plants have enough water. So we have our strawberry field right here that we started. We're unrolling three foot drip tape on our determinant tomatoes to do a Florida weave. Our other tomatoes are going to be on five foot drip tape spacing. Here we go. So we are splicing together old junk from our other house, essentially. All this drip tape came from our old house, and you can see down, it is not all the same length. This field is 100 foot long. These are random pieces, so we are patchworking this. So what we're doing is taking an extra piece that was too short anyways to use. I'm matching on our existing tape, where an emitter is, there's one, missed it. And then I'm measuring out about five feet over. I know we want our next stripper to be here. I'm just kind of marking it. And then now we're gonna be putting that on there. And it turns out that is close enough for us for what we're doing. So we're gonna have a dripper there. How's the reused drip tape for ease of use? Is it really fun? It's really annoying. <laughs> we're gonna put a coupling on that. 
So these are the coupling. We got all this stuff from dripdepot.com. You put it on like this, you just push it on. You want your drip tape to be facing up. See the lines with the drip points? And then you just screw these on. And then we'll put our other side on. And screw it on. And this won't leak because it is a low pressure system. So we have it all patched in right there. I'm gonna go to the other end, down here. And here is our drip point that we added in right there. See it? We're just gonna come down here, give ourselves enough room and cut it right about there. Our next drip point is right there. I'm just gonna go right here. Okay. These are really nice to have. <laughs> Um, it's actually for cutting like PEX pipe, but we use it in the garden all the time. So much so that it's broken. It'd be nice to close. It doesn't close all the way, so it's kind of a hazard, but I could make a clip for it. These are the ends that we opted to get this year. Last year we got ends that are like this. This is a start, so instead of it having the start point, it just had an end cap at the end. And this year we opted to get these. So how these work, you put it on this end, you slide it in there. And then we're gonna fold it back and tuck it into itself and then pull that down and since this is a low pressure system the design of that is that it will work because it's gonna have really low pressure we're gonna secure that down we will come back and bury the drip tape as that seems to be a really necessary thing with drip tape as it expands and contracts a lot okay more patchwork to do let's get it done so we finally have all of our drip tape cut out to the correct length, about 100 feet. We kind of did that all in a pattern and got them all cut out. We did splice a bunch of old ones too, which took a while. And now we're just going to be setting it up. He's going to run a tape to have it be three foot rows. And I'm just going to use this to mark the rows on my end. And we're going to get this all spaced out. Okay, we're trying two at a time. We already have these capped and the starters on them as well. So that's going to make this easy and we both have landscape staples to get them staked down. Now you probably see all of the weeds and alfalfa coming back and grass coming back in this field. We are going to be weed matting this and we tilled it a while ago and we heard the best way to have the weed mat and the landscape staples stay down is to not retill it and just to cover up this grass that's going to come back and go from there. So that's what we're trying. Taking three over at a time. I'm going to put a stable right here. after lunch and we're back in business. We are unrolling a new roll of poly pipe for our lead line. And it's going just from here. Good. Just from peppers. Right? So this is for the pepper garden only. Chili garden, whatever we're calling it. So again down here we have our one inch pipe. Going up to a riser, it will be put onto a post that we'll put in the ground shortly. And then we have our half inch poly pipe right here coming off of it. Since we're patching everything together, we pulled this off of one of our old lines. This will be our start point for this poly pipe down here. So I'll get it put on. It is going to have a T, which is what we're putting on. Just going to cut it with our very satisfying pipe cutter. And put these in. Put the collar on first, as I always do wrong, and then push this little guy in. It has barbs so it will get stuck in there. And then other side the same. Put the collar on. I almost did it wrong again. Put the barbs in. There we go. And screw it on to our T. 
Here's our piece that's going to go up. Okay. And we will take that apart and eventually put a timer on it so that it's kind of just set it and forget it. But today we just need to make sure that this water runs and doesn't have any random leaks. So do you remember what I said about how that drip tape expands and contracts and expands with heat? Well, it's gotten hotter out and look at all of those humps in our drip tape that is not buried. So that's going to make this a little bit more annoying to get the weed mat on. Now our next step here is punching in all of these drippers and everything is off a tiny bit. So we will just be adjusting as we go. Like this is, needs to go here about three feet to punch this. I like using this puncher. It's the way to go. Just put it right there. Make sure your hole is going to be the correct way. Pop your hole in and plug this in. Here's a little bit of a close up on our next one. That like that. Punch our hole. Push that in. Keep going. After getting all of the lines plugged into the main lead line, here we are burying all of that drip tape on this entire chili field. It was definitely a lot of rows of burying drip tape, but we got it done. All right, well that is it for getting our drip tape irrigation system all set up this year in this garden space. It went together a lot easier than last year being this year was our second year and last year was our first year using drip tape and just figuring everything out. Just took a little bit of time, but totally doable. If you want to see us actually put plants in the ground and get this garden space planted, please consider liking and subscribing and just check out that video on our channel. I will also put it at the end of this video, that is if YouTube allows me to, sometimes they don't actually post it there, but I will try to put it there for you. If not, check out our channel. Thanks for watching.